What's up, you guys? Movie retrospective time, and guess what? Anal probes. Yeah, this movie, <laughs> this movie was something else. I had never seen it. Uh, I saw this movie a long time ago. Uh, it came out in 1989, so I probably saw it in the early 90s, like maybe when I was in my late teens or like early 20s. And I didn't really remember anything about it, so I was like kind of curious to revisit it. <laughs> I had forgotten how batshit insane this movie is, and yet. This is really weird. This is a bizarre, strange movie. It's almost kind of like, it's batshit insane, but at the same time, it's also really kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This I'm not is... really sure how how the film manages to be both of those things simultaneously, this is but the... somehow... This is the naked lunch of UFO movies. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Naked Lunch? Is... We still, we need to review that, actually. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and it, what's fucking ah. what's fucking weird about this movie is that had I seen this had this come out in eighty one and I'd seen it as a kid it probably would have scared me. Well, now I um, have seen a lot of reviews of this. Who, the people that did see it when they were kids yeah. and they did say like the alien scenes in particular yeah. like absolutely did scare them. And I can see that. Yeah, I'd be like, what the fuck is I can going see on in this? You know what I mean? And it's just kind of a meandering tale. Of this dude who's obviously a crazy person being played by Christopher Walken, who's crazy as shit as himself. Right <laughs> and he at random times gets abducted by aliens. Other people kind of see it. He jokes with the aliens. He high fives the aliens. The aliens dance. They're fucking creepy looking. <laughs> um, it's a lot. They guys. rape him. And he goes, how dare you? <laughs> they put the fucking anal thing up his butt booty and it, it kind of like show they show walking from weird angles like his knees in between the camera and like and and it, and it, it shit happens it's kind of fucking hilarious when you think about it as noble as walking kind of kind of sometimes comes across he allowed himself to be in this role where they put some up his booty and his response <laughs> was just, he looks back and goes how dare you <laughs> Well, as a, we forget to mention that even before that happens, I like that the aliens have, like, their anal probe is in this, like, nice little, you know, kind of hole in the wall thing that, yeah. like, it, you know, you pull it out like it's a vacuum comes cleaner like a snake. thing. It comes out like a snake. Yeah, it comes out like that. And, uh, you know, they have it around just for such occasions. Hey, bring me the anal probe yeah. Glock or whatever your name is. And so they bring it out. And before they stick it in his booty hole, though, he actually says, can we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's fucking weird, man. And, this and, is one of the weirdest movies I've and, ever seen. Yeah. And what's <laughs> fucking weird about it is that the movie's well made. It's a well made movie. It's got a good score. Eric Clapton did the score, yeah. actually. And you can tell it's very Eric Clapton. -y. Yeah. It's shot pretty well. Um, the acting's good in it. Uh, it's The dialogue is just kind of meandering and all over the place, but I think that's the way Streber is. Um, I think he wrote a book. It was supposed to be just like this, right? Yeah, I kind of want. Book, yeah, right? I want to get into that because uh, yeah. yeah, this is a whole thing. There's no real plot to it because it's a paranormal experience on on his hand. And you know, I've I've had some fucking definitely paranormal experiences in my family, not just me, but my whole family. And it wasn't it wasn't UFOs or anything. But I, later on, I can talk about what I think this is. But it doesn't really have a plot to it, which I understand that because because mine didn't really have a plot to it either. It was just something that happened. But with this one, the chances of this being extraterrestrial is about zero. Zero. Although I believe he thought it was. But that's he not I it. kind of looked into it a little bit more because I yeah. said, now, does he? Does Whitley Strieber, the author, actually believe that this happened to him? And he does. See, but I don't think it's like an Amityville horror situation where I think they just right. like made it up like to write yeah. a book and make some money off it. I think he genuinely does. Him. And honestly, Communion was only the first book that he wrote about his experiences. And I think he's since written four or five more yeah. like about the same thing. And I think he even like used some funds from the book like to yeah. to do like a... You know, um, open like a group or like a, you know, for people that had the same things. I guess I'll them. go ahead and just jump forward and nip this in the bug, but I think this is. This is sleep paralysis. That's I kind of feel like it probably is. I've had it happen to me, and it is fucking scary, where you have dreams and reality being superimposed over itself, and you're awake, but you're seeing dream material interlaced with the room that you're in, and and um, it's a weird feeling. And um, you can also... I've noticed that when that's happened to me, 
and it's happened to me probably about six or seven times, two or three of the times that it happened, I, w I thought like, damn, I can go out of my body like astral projection from this state. Because I realized it was an altered state of consciousness. But I couldn't do it. You either wake up and become fully lucid or you go back into a dream. Yeah, it wasn't, but it felt like you could release your soul and go into the damn astral plane, which that's kind of happened to me in near-death experiences. But that's what he's talking about. I don't think it's extraterrestrials. It's, he's got something wrong with his brain. They looked for it in the movie. They thought there might have been something wrong with his brain. They thought maybe he had temporal lobe epilepsy. There's something going on in his brain which allows him to have sleep paralysis real easily and not be able to come out of it. That's not a big problem. It's just in, in a brain problem. It's just, or it might not be hardware, maybe a software, maybe he... Well, a lot know, of people experience do, it, I, right. I, particularly under uh, times of great stress, a yeah. lot of people. I've had it happen once. Um, it wasn't as uh, terrifying as some, because I've known some people that had it like regularly, and <clears> some <throat> of the shit they described was like way worse than what right. I saw. But I can see how if that should happen to you all the time, because it did absolutely seem real, even though after a few seconds, I was yeah. like, I don't think that's really there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. So when you watch this movie, if you're a big into UFOs and shit, don't look at this as a UFO story. That's not what this is talking about. It's not even really paranormal. Although I think paranormal things can happen for, in, a, in, a, um, in sleep paralysis. Because NBE or, or, or fucking OBE, out-of-body experience which is like spontaneous out-of-body experience, which that's happened to me. It was kind of like sleep paralysis when it began, but there was also R RSPK, recurrent spontaneous psychokinesis in the room. Things shaking like that. And there was a witness that saw it. I tell that story in another video. But So I'm not saying he's bullshitting. I'm just saying that this is a movie really about sleep paralysis, if you ask me. And I kind of suspect that Streber might know that it was sleep paralysis. But that wouldn't make a very good book or a very good movie, would it? Yeah, I mean, okay. So the thing about this, I will note, I don't think, even in the movie, they don't mention UFOs or aliens. I mean, no. I think when he goes to the support group... The other people do. They see UFOs. He but I think, UFOs. But he says, well, that's going back to, because I want to get yeah. into like Whitley Strieber and the book and stuff a little bit too, because yeah. it's notable that in the book, he never called them, he never came out and said that they were extraterrestrial necessarily. He just calls them visitors. Like deep, like And he's basically like, yeah, they could be interdimensional. They right. could be extraterrestrial, but they've been here a long time. They're, you know, he like left it open. He's like, I'm not saying that that's what they are. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so in case you don't know, Whitley Strieber, prior to writing Communion, which came out in 1987, he was a pretty well-known, very successful, generally horror writer. He, I think he wrote some fantasy as well. Uh, probably his best-known ones prior to Communion were The Wolfen, which was yeah, made into the movie, movie Wolfen, movie. which we still haven't reviewed that one either. Yeah, I remember this kid loved it. And The Hunger, uh, which was made into a movie in 1983 with Catherine Deneuve, Susan Sarandon, and David Bowie, and still remains one of my favorite vampire movies ever. This movie lives up to the other two. It does look that good. It looks good. It's a good movie. It, the story is just not... It's just weird. I don't know. I didn't like it. I just... I kind of felt like... Okay. I think it's a well-made movie. It is. I'm not yeah. saying that. Yeah. But... There's a, a couple of structural problems I had with it. And, okay, so Whitley Strieber writes Communion. It came out in 87, and he basically said, this is an experience that actually happened to me. It's a true story. It happened to me and my family. It was a massive success. And you have to think, this is 87, so I kind of feel like the whole alien abductee thing, was, while it had been around, it hadn't yeah. really been sort of, like, codified into one right. narrative. Around this time, it was actually, when this movie, when this book came out, Communion, you had a damn professors at Harvard looking at it, which all of a sudden, this this subject became legitimate. And like, oh, well, Whitley Strieber, it happened to him? Oh, well, then it's got to be true. There's something about this, during this time, so, for some reason, alien abduction was being taken seriously. Yeah, and I think yeah. this book was a large part of, part of uh, yeah. solidifying that because, right. it, like I said, it was a massive bestseller. He made all kind of money off of it. And so inevitably, they decided they were going to make a movie about it. Now, the guy that directed the movie, you're going to laugh when I say this, yeah. uh, Philippe Mora, who I think is Australian. Yeah. 
Um, he's directed a lot of other movies, but the ones that will probably make you laugh are The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf, oh, okay. and Howling 3, oh. The Marsupials. Um, so he's done some other ones, too. I don't know yeah. if any of them are any good. Uh, Howling 2 is terrible, terrible. but um, I've yeah. never seen the third one. Now, probably okay, worse. so they're going to, like, adapt the book. I'm sh I think what they were going for, that I don't necessarily think they wanted to make a horror movie. They were trying to make, and I don't even think it's marketed as a horror movie. I think it's more marketed more as like a sci-fi drama thriller uh, that's based on someone's real experiences. And it seemed like they were more interested in exploring the mental state that Whitley Strieber was going through. Because like I said, the you know, the book was, he wrote the book and said that's happened to him. So I think the movie was kind of more interested in exploring that. Now, what they did though, was they got Christopher Walken to play Whitley Strieber. Everybody loves Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken is awesome, but- I was trying to do his voice the whole movie. <laughs> but, I will say, this may be an apocryphal story, I'm not entirely sure. Christopher Walken did absolutely not believe that Whitley Strieber had been abducted by aliens or visitors or whatever. Yeah. And He thought he was a crazy person. <laughs> right. So what? So basically, I don't know if this is true, but this supposedly happened on set. So they're doing this. Well, they let Christopher Walken uh, improvise a lot, which if you've seen the movie, it will be very apparent. Yeah. Um, so apparently one time Whitley Strieber is on the set because obviously he's, he wrote the book and he also wrote the screenplay and he says to Christopher Walken, apparently, Hey, you know, you're playing, you know, can you tone it down a little bit? You're, pay you're playing me too crazy. Mm -hmm. At which point Christopher Walken says to him, if the shoe fits. Yeah. The shoe. <laughs> were, I, I don't know crazy. if that's true, but I hope it is. Cause that's pretty fucking well, funny. I you know you're crazy. <laughs> I was trying to do his voice the whole time, but I can't really get the walking thing down yeah i mean a lot of people can because a yeah. lot of people yeah a lot of people yeah. can't do it like a really yeah. good i I'm, I'm not one of those people i can't do it an impersonation of either but i hope that's true so if you watch the movie as i said and like i said i think christopher walken is actually simultaneously again like the best thing about this movie yeah. and the worst thing about this movie had they got someone other than christopher walken to be in this it could have actually been something kind of more along the lines of maybe like fire in the sky yeah. which was actually like a really good creepy drama about somebody who supposedly really got kidnapped by aliens um but when they put christopher walken in there and let him do the walking thing. He's walking the fuck out. He is, yeah, and he is really at his walkingest yeah. in this movie. Yeah. Um, it's something. Uh, it's Although, it's hard to explain if you've never seen this I think movie. This movie would. I, I, I don't think this movie would have attracted any attention without Christopher. Absolutely Walken. not. Absolutely I, I not. Think, I think he actually saves the movie. That's what I meant when I yeah. said that. I mean, like I said, if their intention yeah. was to make a serious film about the psychological re ramifications of whether or not he did get, you know, probed by the aliens or whatever, yeah. the minute you put Christopher Walken in there and let him do his thing, yeah. and knowing that Christopher Walken thought that Whitley Strieber was a crazy person and that none of this had happened, he is absolutely not taking any of it seriously yeah. and is reacting in really, really weird ways. And yeah. As a matter of fact, okay, this is how I'm going to explain this film. This film, this is a movie about not a, not a person like a regular human being being kidnapped by aliens and, you know, the repercussions that follow from that. This is about what would happen if Christopher Walken, the actual person Christopher Walken, yeah was taken by aliens yeah. and you were seeing a movie about how he reacted to it because Christopher Walken is a weirdo. Yeah. So the way that he reacts to everything in this movie yeah. is not the way a normal person would react to these situations. It, it, and it's just so bizarre yeah, to watch. Yeah, sitting naked on a damn table and the aliens are there and he sits and says, here I am, in front of you, naked. <laughs> you talking sober? <laughs> Guess not. And then he starts waving to him and they're waving back and shit. Fucking the aliens this is the weirdest man. fucking movie. It's weird, man. I mean, I've seen it's some like weird naked movies. Lunch. It's like Naked Lunch. This is, sure. this maybe is weirder than Naked Lunch. Yeah. At least Naked Lunch, like, at least you were expecting it to be. I was expecting yeah. this. Yeah. Like I said, I hadn't seen it in a long time. And I yeah. knew, like, I knew Whitley Strieber. I've read, uh, I don't, I did read Communion, but it was a long time ago. 
I've read The Hunger. I read The Wolfen. I read some of his other stuff. I had seen this movie before, but I didn't remember anything about it. So when I was going to rewatch it, I think I was expecting something, again, more akin to like Fire in the Sky, which was more like a drama about somebody who thinks they've been kidnapped by aliens. And they, you know, like the Fire in the Sky, like doesn't, it doesn't take a stand either way. It's just kind of exploring what happens when you... Laughing. I mean... I just keep laughing. They put that thing up his booty and when they pull it back out, he looks at the fucking king alien and goes, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Please tell me that somebody's made a gif of that. I mean, they must have. This movie, I feel like it's, it's kind of forgotten, I feel like, which... Is crazy because more people should see it. I'm surprised it doesn't. It does have a little bit of a cult following, but not a huge one. It actually aged pretty well because it's just even more ridiculous today. I feel like this is been. eminently memeable. It's much more because Christopher today. Walken does some weird shit right. in this movie. He's playing Whitley Strieber. Whitley Strieber yeah. is a novelist. I don't know. I don't know Whitley Strieber as a person. I've never alive. met him. Yeah, he's still he's alive. alive. In his seventies. Uh, he has a podcast too. Yeah, uh, Dreamland. It's called Dreamland. Yeah. Yeah. And. So I've never met him as a person. It's wild, man. <laughs> I would imagine that he is not a tenth as eccentric yeah. as Christopher Walken <laughs> portrays him in this movie. Christopher Walken, I don't know if Whitley Strieber really does this, okay? I don't know. <laughs> novelists are weird. I'm a novelist, but I'm not this weird. I'm pretty normal as far as, as far as novelists go. But he's like dressing up in costumes in his house, like working on his working on his work and yeah. put you know, putting on like fedoras and putting doing German accents. Yeah. And he's just and like one time, what was that whole thing like before he goes to like meet up with the aliens and make peace with the aliens or whatever at the end? And he comes into the house dressed up like he has the fedora and the thing yeah. and he's comes in like singing like putting on the ritz and he's yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. but there's no like explanation he's just no. doing that but he's a crazy person it's just very very <laughs> odd it's just the choices that he makes in this are really really odd maybe christopher walken thought this is the dumbest shit ever and i'm just gonna like ham the fuck out of it just to like to well, amuse myself well what's funny is that it, it doesn't the, the, it doesn't really f this probably would have been a lot better as a book it's just that that doesn't really fit in a movie of this topic. The t it's the kind of like tonal, it's tonal lash, I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah. So it just comes off as kind of like insanity, or no, not really insanity. It comes off as surrealism. Very yeah. Surrealist. It is. It surrealism is very surrealist. Is what it comes off as. Now some like people. Like Salvador Dali would make. Some people yeah. that are into like UFO films or think that they have been abducted themselves. Um, I've actually heard a couple of them commend this movie because of the surrealism and the yeah. ridiculousness because they said that was closer to what well, we like, experienced. That's what I'm saying, man. This is the like, strangeness. Yeah, this is this is sleep paralysis. That's what they're talking about. Yeah, I think about. it is too. Sleep paralysis. Now, here, here's the thing, okay. I wanted to get into this now, but this is about time probably to get into it. Some of you people might go ahead and be real big into the ufology which I'm, I'm into that too. There's some UFO cases out there that uh, fucking no. I think that should happen. Like the real Phoenix Lights case. I think that was real. Uh, some of the stuff involving like airliners um, and and UFO uh, UFO stuff like fucking uh, Jafari from the uh, Iraqi Air Force. My granddad was in Isfahan at that time with uh, Grumman Aerospace. Fucking selling those F-14 Tomcats and trying to teach the Shah's men on how to fucking work those things because he was he was for, from that company, and they heard about they were asked questions if they were building a supersonic reconnaissance planes for the Iraqis in secret because they'd pick something up on a damn satellite, something moving out at about Mach 12 in that area. So something was there. There was nothing could go Mach 12 in those days, you know. I don't even think, because I don't even think they had supersonic scramjet rockets, I don't think, at that point. But, uh, and, I, and the chances of it being an error at that place in that time where uh, fighter pilots are saying they're seeing big fucking light lit up craft. Anyway, I was getting at the modern, the modern understanding of ufology and extraterrestrials and exobiology and the distances involved between planets and what kind of technology you need really wasn't around in the 80s and the 90s. The average person really didn't have a good grasp on, on this. They thought that a small ship could travel between the stars and land and that 
biological beings in there might need to collect samples from cows and from people and maybe look up inside your booty and fucking get readings off of you because they might need to know this shit. And then they go back to wherever they came from. All right. No, what we know now, no, that's fucking highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. For a lot of different reasons. If an extraterrestrial civilization can make it here to this planet, they probably have been able to make it here for hundreds of thousands of years or thousands of years, which means that they were here a long time ago and that they know everything about this planet already. They would know about our DNA. They would know how it all works. They would could come here and just with a few drops of water and a few drops of blood from animals and look at DNA, they would know everything about human beings because that would be real common to them. They would understand that kind of biology because there's nothing really special about us. They would look at our DNA and go, oh yeah, we've seen this before. We know how this works. Oh, okay, that's how they're built. There's no reason for them to hold you down and abduct you and stick something up in your booty. Maybe they're just, just like no space fetishists. Uh, when you <laughs> Maybe they just yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, that's funny, but no. I just, <laughs> no. And, yeah, I'm just um, making a joke. I, they're not coming. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then another thing is, is that uh, what we know now, the chances of them being biological is very slim. It's going to be something kind of like out of 2001. It's going to be a, a living machine type thing that is alive and has a soul, I guess, like the monolith. You know, that's a godlike thing that looks at you like we would look at a single-celled organism and maybe it can create life so they wouldn't really be too mystified or curious that much because they would have seen lots of places like earth and they would just not be all that interested probably they would look at humans go oh, those those might eventually evolve into living machines and then we'll come back and we'll talk to them yeah you know we're always putting ourselves at the center of everything you know we used to put the sun at the center of the universe <laughs> you know we used to put the earth at the center of the universe actually now uh, actually it's the sun is in the center of the solar system yeah we just know? constantly get knocked off of our getting, perches right yeah. so there's no reason that that wouldn't happen again yeah the chances are aliens, we're insignificant and that's okay yeah it's okay chances are aliens <laughs> have been here know all about this place and we're a backwater that's not not even very interesting and the aliens are just meh yeah meh <laughs> we'll come back in a few million years maybe they'll have living machines we'll maybe they'll be them. smart then yeah well when they're yeah. not about us <laughs> things that we create might be smart one day we're part yeah. of a process so uh no when you look at these stories like this they start to look a lot like the stories of the 1950s of the big old fat dude who's 50 years old in his coveralls says yeah i was out in the cornfield and the fucking ufo landed and out came a beautiful extraterrestrial woman with long fucking gold hair with big old boobs and she wanted to have sex with me Dudes used to say that kind of shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. and uh, But that stories like this start to sound like stories like that. So this didn't happen. Or it wasn't. Well, obviously. No, this I is mean, sleep this paralysis. Movie, yeah. This is sleep paralysis. On the, now, I will say, though, that it just as a movie, like if we're not looking at it from, you know, the fact of this is supposed to be based on a true yeah. story, like on paper... It sounds like it actually could have been really good, like really creepy. You know what I mean? Like if you talk about yeah. it, because, okay, so at the beginning you have Whitley Strieber, who's a writer. He's had some successful horror novels, but he's kind of having like a little bit of writer's block. He's having trouble like coming up with his next idea or whatever. He's got a wife and a kid, like a son. And so they decide, well, they need to get away from the city. They set it in, uh, they lived in Manhattan. They, so they have a cabin like up in upstate New York, presumably. So they go up there with two of their friends, like another couple, and they're gonna go up there. Now the first night that they're there, and I think this is like in the fall, like in October or whatever. So the first night that they're there, they're all awakened. Now he has like all these burglar alarms, I guess he's paranoid or something, but he has like all these burglar alarms and like, uh, you know, motion lights and sensors and shit like that, like outside the thing, so they don't get any prowlers. So those are bright, but the first night that they're there, they're woken up in the middle of the night by like a super, super bright light, which you're led to assume is like some kind of craft, like hovering over the thing. They never show it. It's just like a br really bright light. Now, Christopher Walken wakes up 
and he doesn't really see anything or so he thinks like he there's just like a big bright light and you see like a tiny little maybe little gray alien type situation like peeking around a doorway which a lot of people like i said if they said they saw it as kids and they thought it was really creepy which i can see that because it is kind of creepy uh his kids start screaming his head off and uh the wife stays asleep now the next morning he doesn't really remember what happened um but the other couple like especially the guy are like I, I don't like it here we need to get the fuck out of here i don't like i don't like what the fuck happened last night and i don't like it so he makes like christopher walken like he makes them all leave so they all leave now after this christopher walken goes back to his regular life but essentially starts to exhibit signs of like ptsd essentially like he starts having uh flashbacks and nightmares um about what he saw even though he claims he doesn't remember it and he's starting to kind of flip out they have like they find this kind of like thing on the back of his head where it looked like uh you know something was stuck in there and so he has to he gets crazier and crazier his wife's like look i can't put up with your shit anymore you're like acting like a nutcase and so he goes to a doctor they do like the temporal lobe ep epilepsy shit on him and then they're like okay well maybe you need to go to a psychiatrist and then the psychiatrist hypnotizes him at which point he starts to remember all of the like seeing the aliens and the anal probe and all that other kind of stuff interestingly the aliens in this they have two different they're i keep calling them aliens and whitley streber is very adamant that he doesn't call them that he's not saying that they're not extraterrestrials he's just saying that he doesn't know what they are, he doesn't know what they are and so he's not saying he's like i'm not necessarily saying they're from another planet maybe they are i don't know he's like i don't know what they were but there's two kinds you have one kind that looks very much like the standard gray alien with like the little face and the big black bug eyes and it's, it's like really skinny and like little. And then you have like some little, <laughs> what Christopher Walken calls little blue fuckers yeah. or blue midgets yeah. that kind of look a little bit like the little midgety things from Phantasm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, they're except Jawa they're outfits. Th yeah, they, but they look like little trolls yeah. or, you know, little, little, little creatures like that. Yeah. And they kind of purse their little lips all the time yeah they got little human faces yeah but the weird thing about this and maybe this is a spoiler the weird thing about this and whitley streber s said this in his book too is that and they show this at the end of the movie is that even though that's what the two types of visitors look like um that's not actually what they look no, like because they're they're masks yeah, yeah. Because at one point, like, one of the gray-looking aliens, like, the bottom of its thing breaks off, and it looks kind of like an insecty yeah. green kind of thing. And then at one point, too, like, you see one of the little blue fuckers, and, the, and it's just like a head, like someone's taken the mask off. So yeah. the director even said, you know, Whitley Strieber said that the aliens, he doesn't really know what they look like because he got the impression that they were wearing masks. Yeah. It, which is weird in itself. And, and he kisses so, them every now and then. Yeah. It's funny shit. He, he, he does. He makes out with one of the little he, blue ones at some yeah, point. Yeah, and it's like, what? Yeah. And then, I mean, there's so many, like, what the fuck scenes in this, yeah. which, like I said, it could have worked because if you sort of framed it as, oh, it's not necessarily aliens, but it's somebody with sleep paralysis or somebody who's, like, maybe losing their mind. Yeah. Um, some of the surreal in imagery, I think, does work. Um, yeah. I think it is, like, really creepy. But then some of it. It just goes way too far over onto like the ridiculous side. I mean, yeah. like there's scenes where he's, you know, he's dreaming, quote unquote, or supposedly like remembering what happened to him when he got abducted, and he's in this. Is it a steam bath? Uh, he's like a steam bath. Yeah. And then there's like the little gray aliens yeah. are kind of like floating around behind him, going. Yeah, dancing and floating. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And I'm not exaggerating. That's yeah. they're just like woo. Almost like a little sixties dance and shit. Da, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. With their little noodly arms. Right. It's the craziest thing he, you've ever having, seen. He's having sleep paralysis. I, uh, one of the times when it happened to me, I just woke up and saw the room and it was all fucking kind of like a uh, kind of star patterny or not star pattern. It's gonna be look at it like uh, uh, it's hard to say. But it was just dark in there and I looked over to the wall next to me, I couldn't move and a three foot tall face started to come out of the wall. Like a f image of a face started to warp out of it. And uh, that almost started getting scared, but then I realized that, oh, I'm dreaming. And it just faded away. The one that fucking freaked me out didn't happen to me. It happened to my friend Jason. And he told me, he said he woke up in the middle of the, the, the night, couldn't move. It was dark in the room. And he didn't know why he woke up. And he looked out the foot of bed and there was somebody sitting at the foot of his bed said it was small, about the size of a small child. It was hunched over. He could just see a black silhouette. And as he's looking at it, he 
tried to scream or ah, you know what I mean? But he couldn't move. And as he was looking at it, and all of a sudden, it turned around and looked at it. And then fucking, he just lost it and it vanished. I would shit my fucking pants if I yeah. woke up and saw that. Seriously, yeah, it I'm vanished. Not, not gonna lie. And he couldn't move. He couldn't move. <laughs> yeah. And then he finally relaxed up, and then he then he moved and got up, went and got some water. I mean, if you've ever yeah. seen, have you ever seen the documentary that's called The Nightmare? Yeah. That's yeah. about sleep paralysis. Yeah. It's actually no, it's seen. actually pretty good, and it has like a bunch of people that suffer from it, yeah. and they are like describing their experiences and stuff, and it's yeah. some of the shit was like terrifying. And as it was winding down, he said he had this fucking overwhelming feeling of a presence in the room, even though it was gone. But it was he could still like he yeah he thought maybe it was really there, which that kind of. Lead, that, that, that's what they're talking about when they're talking about incubus and succubus and fucking I, and stuff like stories like this. Well, people uh, they used to have um, nightmares. I think is exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. Well, they uh, used uh, to call it hag ridden. Hag ridden. Yeah. Like because they people perceived that there was like a witch or something like that, In like sitting on their chest. Yeah. And they couldn't breathe or move. Yeah. And then there was like this horrifying thing right there. But that's what they used to call it. Sitting on your chest. Well, I guess that's kind of like sitting on the edge of your bed. Yeah. He thought it was sitting at the edge of the bed and it woke him up. Well, I mean, have you ever seen that uh, that, like that very famous Henry Fuseli painting, The Nightmare? That's what yeah. that depicts, like somebody yeah. sleeping with like a little Person's gremlin, like sitting. a little gremlin yeah. like perched on our chest like that. So it's a, it's a pretty common experience, like a lot of people have it. Like I yeah. said, even people that don't suffer from it a lot, like have had it once or twice, like if they're going through like a real stressful time in their life. Um, like I said, I've had it happen at one time, but that's yeah. and it wasn't that bad. That's it was what I think, creepy, but it wasn't that bad. That's what I think Strieber's talking about. Sleep paralysis. He's having some kind of... It would explain... Uh, yeah, it would explain a lot of... Nightmares of sleep paralysis. And like I said, I do feel like... You know, it's been a long time since I read the book. I do feel like there is a good... If you did take a stand one way or the other, whether you thought it was real or sleep paralysis or whatever you could actually make a really creepy movie out of this. Yeah. It's just that they got Christopher Walken in there and he obviously wasn't really taking it all that seriously. They let him improv. So he was just doing like bizarre things. Like he would be like, he would be woken, woken up by, you know, the bright light or whatever. And then like the aliens or the little blue people would come into the room and he would just look at it. Instead of being scared, he would just like laugh. He'd be like, ah, what the fuck? Out? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like almost like yeah. he was laughing at the makeup effects. Yeah. And uh, so it kind of like, it was just a very, very strange like juxtaposition. Yeah. But um, yeah, the way they, okay. So they, he goes to, you know, he gets hypnotized and he starts remembering things. And then his wife is obviously like, you must be losing your fucking marbles. But then their kid, who has also seen it, says something that like matches up with something he said. So she's like, oh, well, maybe there's something to it. So she goes and gets hypnotized. And then it turns out that even though during the first uh, encounter, she was thought she was asleep the whole time. But when they hypnotize her, she actually yeah. saw some weird shit, too. So then she actually starts to believe him. And then they go to this group of other abductees which is actually like pretty funny and he like thinks all there that they're kind of all crazy yeah and then he decides and they don't really like the weird thing about this movie well okay so it the weird thing about this movie that i think made it like simultaneously bizarre and boring at the same time one thing this movie did structurally that i thought was really uh, unnecessary it would show you most of what happened. Like, here's the event, like the bright light and this little alien peeking or whatever. And then later on, Christopher Walken would go to the doctor's office and get hypnotized. And then he would tell you what happened. I'm like, but we already saw that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it seemed a little like repetitive. Like he just kept saying the same thing. I saw this bright light. I'm like, yes, we've established that. You saw yeah. a bright light outside the window, and then you saw a little these little things like peeking, and it just seemed like there was too much repetition. It was like, yes, we know what he saw. Yeah, like we we've uh, we've yeah. already seen it, and then he's already talked about it one time. Because yeah, if you're doing a movie, just show it, and yeah. you don't have don't show it, and then like a couple scenes later, have somebody like describing what you just fucking saw. You and just he goes fucking back saw. To normal life, and he's talking about writing books and stuff. It's just not. It's not real. Com the edit is not very compelling. It has to be more streamlined and go through. It is like, very meandering. It has to be almost like a damn ride. Yeah. Like going through. It's damn, meandering. And it repeats itself it too now. much. Yeah, it repeats it itself too much. You can't fix it now. It's been too long. Because you already <laughs> know. I mean, going into it, I'm presuming that most of the people that went and saw this movie had read the book. They're like, look, we know that you think you've been abducted by visitors or aliens or whatever. Yeah. Um, we don't really need to waste any time in the movie establishing that. Um... 
And if you're gonna, I you know, I figure if you're gonna show the event, just show the event. Don't have him in the hypnotist office later yeah. saying it over again because yeah. we already saw it. And you and they had all they had um, all the special effects already made. They just should have showed more, more of the abduction scenes, longer, weirder shit happening. You didn't need all the like I said. You didn't need too much of him going to the fucking shrink and. I mean, you could have that, but like you know, shorten, shorten those. It a lot. Yeah. You don't need him like describing everything that we already saw. Show it. Yeah. yeah. Don't just show somebody talking about it. Right. Um, you know, and definitely don't do both things yeah. because I'm like, yeah, we've established this. Can well, we works move in on, a book please? Doesn't work in a movie. Exactly, and we've talked about that yeah. a lot of times. So I think that was probably, I think that was the main problem I had with just the edit of it and the structure of it was it seemed very repetitive and there was yeah. a lot of scenes in there that didn't need to be in there yeah. it seemed a little bit long it's an hour and 48 minutes and I think they it easily felt longer. They, yeah and yeah it felt longer than that they yeah. easily could have chopped 20 minutes out yeah. of that no problem at all yeah. um, and uh, for one reason too like you know the friend like the the man of the couple that they go up to yeah. you know that had yeah, the white yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have a conversation with him and I don't know if this is based on a real guy or not they made him Eastern European and I think they only made him Eastern European so he could bring up the folklore of the kobold. Of the kobold. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of them introducing, oh, maybe it's not necessarily aliens, or maybe if it is aliens, they've been here a long time, and a lot of different cultures have yeah. folklore about them, which is fascinating. And I kind of wish they'd gone more in that direction, um, rather than having Christopher Walken toward the end and he doesn't say that he's going to do this he doesn't really explain his motivation for doing any of this stuff but like toward the end he's like just comes in singing putting on the ritz or whatever for str some strange reason and then he says to his wife i'm gonna go get some cigarettes and then he leaves and she's like you don't smoke and then he drives all the way back up to upstate new york to the cabin and goes to, he sees this light in the woods and he goes in there, into their ship, presumably, and like hangs with them. Yeah. And then while he's in there and he dances with them, yeah. and then there's a doppelganger of him that looks kind of like a magician or something, and then there's a doppelganger of his wife there who looks kind of like, is it like a flapper or like a glamour type of situation? And I'm like, what in the actual fuck is going on here? This is what he saw. And like I said, it's maybe that's what he saw, yeah. but in a movie, and maybe some of the people that saw this movie and just thought it would be like a creepy sci-fi, whatever, maybe they should have contextualized that a little bit more, is what I'm yeah. saying. And also, they didn't go much into, I think they established that, and this isn't established very well, but I think they established that once he starts remembering all the stuff that happened, he remembers that when he was a little kid, he saw the bright light and and the the visitors too and then this leads him to conclude that this is something that is passed on in families like if you so his son will also have contact with the visitors like he's chosen or special or something and that wasn't really gone into all that sufficiently a lot of stuff in here is just like, like unexplained and it's not i'm not saying everything has to be explained i'm just saying that there's not like a lot of like a real compelling reason for some of the characters, particularly him, to be doing what they're doing. I didn't really get, like, why why did he drive up there and just say, well, I'm going to make peace with them, but that he didn't really, like, establish or say that that's what he was going to do. Naked Lunch doesn't establish anything either. That's why Yeah, but saying. Naked Lunch is supposed to be well, that, I was surrealist. Saying, this, is the, this is the Naked Lunch of fucking UFO This is supposed movies. to kind of be, I thought, like a coherent, yeah. so maybe not. No. I, I mean, I, I kind of do feel like they were trying to maybe... I mean, the director did seem to want to approach, like, what Whitley Struber said that he saw, when, look, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. It makes sense when you look at it from the point of view of sleep paralysis. Well, yeah, that's what I mean, but it doesn't make, like, like narrative sense right. is what I when, mean. When you're having sleep paralysis, sometimes you're all, it starts in a damn waking dream. Yeah. Where you're dreaming and you're totally in the dream world, but you become conscious inside that dream. Even though you think you're not, you don't realize you're dreaming. And then you'll see some weird shit happen and it's bizarre. And then you might go, wait a minute, hold on. Am I dreaming? And then you're in fucking sleep paralysis. You're awake looking, but you can't move. Because you've now, because you woke up from a deep sleep and the fucking, 
that part of your brain that, that is still turned off to keep you from acting out, so you're paralyzed. But then you have, you can now see, but some of you, that dream material is superimposed over yeah. what you're seeing. So a person who doesn't know what the hell's happening would be real, could get real confused about what's real and what's not real. They would still think that they're still, that they were awake in another world, and now they're back, and they can see the room, and the aliens are in the room with them. That's what this is about. Yeah. It's just, well, I'll never give you that fucking context. But what he's saying, the stories he's telling, fit that symptom yeah and i'm just saying that if if you're if we want to approach the movie as this is an experience he actually had yeah. rather than framing it as we don't know what this was because it, it seems like they wanted to frame it as this is an experience he actually had rather than making it more ambiguous as in is he losing his mind was it just yeah. sleep paralysis or whatever but if you were gonna do that i kind of feel if you were gonna go like in a more experiential direction if you want to call it that i think that they should have made it more cohesive or at least explained it a little bit more um or given reason why certain things were going on the way it is the way they just kind of left it it just seems kind of silly i think they i think it was supposed to be a trip it, I think it was. I, you know, I think to some degree they were trying to do that. Yeah. I just don't think they were very successful. Because e- even it was if... It 89. You, I mean, even if you'd gone the surrealist route, yeah. you could. I wish they would have made the imagery creepier. Yeah. Because the imagery was just very silly. What, the, what this... If you ask me, Mel Gibson came and kind of fucking improved this story and made signs. Or was that Mel Gibson did signs? No, who he was in it. He it was, was in it. It was, right. M. Night, uh, it was M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. That's right. S- Signs was kind of like this, but a lot more coherent. This movie, I mean, like I said, same if you want to see a purportedly true alien abduction story that's actually creepy and actually goes into the, like the psychological trauma behind it, a blah blah blah, then watch Fire in the Sky. Yeah. Don't watch this one. Fire in the Sky um, is a little better. Yeah. Fire in the Sky is a lot better. Yeah. Um, and it's coming from like the same place as this. Yeah. This movie, though, I think it's worth watching, though, if you're into like UFO shit, just so you can see how fucking strange it is. Well, it's also. It's not, so strange. It doesn't really come across as a UFO movie. It, come, it comes no. across closer to, to like uh, something like The Exorcist or, some, or, or Amityville Horror, almost kind of like a damn haunted house or paranormal type movie, something in the damn house. And it's getting you, and then you're in another world. And it comes, but back it's not it. scary. Not like there's scary, there's though. a couple image images in yeah. it that are kind of creepy. It would have scared me if I was a kid, and that probably would have scared you if you were yeah. little. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it is honestly, a lot of it is just Christopher Walken and the I, I can't remember the actress's name that uh, played yeah. his wife. She was in All the President's Men and stuff. Um, but it's just them kind of like dicking around, like mm. making jokes, and him being weird. Yeah. And her being like, what the fuck? And, you know, it's it's that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. which I guess was meant to establish, like, characters so you would care, but it just came off as, like, weird and bizarre. Like, what is this oddball doing? And, like, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it just, I don't know. It just, it came across a very strange exper- experience to me. Um, I Now, like I said, this came out, the book was a massive success, as I said. It, was, it came out in 87. This came out in 89, and not surprisingly, was a huge commercial flop. Um, <laughs> because I can see why. Now, I have seen like some people that, particularly people that are really scared by a, by alien horror, like alien abduction horror, which I'm not. Um, you know, I'm not saying that some sci-fi horror isn't scary because it is. But any of these kind of like oh aliens coming to Earth and like kidnapping people, that is like never scary to me. I don't know why it's just not scary. And I guess because I just can't suspend my disbelief that far. And so, but I have seen that some people that are, like, creeped out by that actually do like this movie. But I'm th- I think most people acknowledge that this is, like, a fucking oddball movie. And as I said, it's, I know this is weird to say that this is simultaneously one of the weirdest and also one of the most boring films I've ever seen. And that Christopher Walken is the best thing about it and the worst yeah, thing yeah. about it at the same time. He's the best thing about it. 
I mean, it's worth watching for yeah. him. Yeah. It's the strangest. I found this YouTube video earlier today that's called Walk In 101, yeah. and it's like a guy, and he's like, in a, it's he's like, it's like he's teaching a class on Christopher Walken. It's like really funny, it. and he so and he does like each of his movies, and I watched like the Communion one today, and it was like fucking hilarious, but. It's just, and they went really into this. There I bet are you some. Christopher watching watch, watch. I bet you, bet you walking watches that kind of shit. <laughs> I would if I was yeah, him. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> yeah. he has better things to do. I don't really know. <laughs> but like I said, he seems to be having a good time in this movie. Um, if he wasn't in it, I I think it would have been forgotten. This movie would have been forgotten. Bigger. Than um, but just the fact that it's like so fucking tonally bizarre. Mm that and because the, the imagery is so silly and even when it's scary like the way that christopher walken reacts to it seems more like christopher walken the person would react to it than like a regular person would you could react give the to hell it. out of this shit you could give that you could make i am imagining shit. i didn't look there's i should have looked yeah. i feel like there's probably the gifts uh, galore yeah. because he's got somebody like weird fucking making out with that fucking ugly ass alien and fucking winking at the alien and fucking just weird kind of shit my favorite thing, I mean, other than the whole anal probe scene, because I was joking at first, I, could, I couldn't remember if Christopher Walken got anally probed in this. So I was already making anal probe jokes, but then I was like, oh shit, he does get anally probed yeah. in this. I forgot I was making a joke and it wasn't even a joke. And when he says how, when he says how dare you, it's like he's not even mad. <laughs> that was the thing that fucking He's like, got. I was kind of into it. He's like, I'm going to try to do it. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Like somebody just like spilled yeah, some yeah, ash yeah, on yeah, his yeah, coat yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, just, like, I, like, I thought that shit was fun. How dare you? <laughs> sticking that, sticking this big huge like thing up yeah, your yeah, booty yeah. hole. And were they like sucking worth... stuff? It was it was hooked up to like a tube or like a pipe. It was. So that... I'm assuming they were shooting something up in there, was... or they were pulling something it was out. That I'm not thing real from sure. War of the Worlds that came down and looked inside the house. Yeah, it was like that. So had well, they just gave him a it free... Was, they were uh, just looking up in there. They gave him a free colon exam. Yeah. Sure. Endoscope. Maybe that's it's why. It's like big, that big around. <laughs> it kind of looked like a gas pump yeah, like a little bit. Yeah, like a gas pump. Fucking... Like, like a, a, little, was, a little bit coming out of the fucking... How dare you? <laughs> like I said, his reactions <laughs> to this are not... In, that, I think that's what, was, that's what got me. I think yeah. that was just kind of like... Cause Chris, I could just cut all the alien <laughs> fucking scenes up and just fucking watch Walk and you just put that shit on endless, endless loop, it's better. It's the best part of the movie. I mean, honestly, yeah. You could yeah. take out all of the other, like the, yeah. you know, the parts of him like farting around with his family because yeah, that's dumb, boring dumb shit. um and and even like the parts of him like in the hypnotist office where he's just talking about stuff that's already happened that's also boring you don't need yeah. that because yeah. they've already shown it yeah just when he's with the aliens but yeah when he's with the aliens season yeah you should just like cut all that together and it might only be 15 or 20 minutes long yeah. and that would probably be like fucking comedy gold yeah like because him just said i'm sitting i'm naked yeah naked in front of me. <laughs> And what do you have to say about it? We sound like we're making this yeah, up. Yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. making it up. I'm naked in front of you. <laughs> we're not making it up. Just sitting here. Christopher Walken high fives an alien. Yeah, he goes, because we're a piece of work. <laughs> he's, he's just, just making comments. He's sitting him. in a fucking thing in yeah, their yeah. ship, and there's, yeah. for real, a gray alien floating behind him going. When he says, says you're above me, you're putting yourself above me, or something like that, it's just some weird shit. It's one. Of, it's the weirdest thing I've ever yeah, seen. It's, it's, yeah. it's not a good movie. It's not. No. It's not. No. But it's it. It's walk. It's fucking hilarious in it. <laughs> I mean, if you're into Christopher Walken, you you yeah. really have to see this to believe and it. And what's funny Seriously. is that it, what's funny is that it's well made. Yeah. It's a well made movie, but it's not really all. It's boring. Mostly boring. That's yeah. That's kind of like the yeah. shame of it. Is I yeah. like I said. I f I feel like if you cut out all the yeah. family stuff and all that, that's not important. Yeah. Everybody just wants to see Christopher Walken yeah. getting down with the aliens yeah. and getting his butt probed. Yeah, and evidently it's not. I'd just, watch that. It's movie. not just me saying this because it flopped back in the day. Yeah. You know, they probably thought it was boring too. And it, it sounds like when we describe it, it sounds like it wouldn't be boring. No, it and parts of it aren't. Parts like parts of it, you're. It comes. And it goes. goes from like you're yeah, dozing comes. off, and then yeah. you're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. You know, it's like that. Yeah. It's that. It's that kind of situation. Yeah. But for long stretches, it's kind of like. Yes. Yeah, like and then you're like, "Wait, shit. what?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like that. So there's some parts. When anytime there's like some family shit, just skip over that. Yeah. And then just get to the next like part. Yeah. With really the nothing. Yeah. But yeah. So this movie. It's on Tubi uh, yeah. for free, right? We watched yeah. it on Tubi, yeah. yeah. Um, 
yeah, if you're into Christopher Walken, go watch it. You absolutely won't believe it. And now I'm going to go, like, check for fucking gifts because I'm sure there's all kind of, like, fun gifts about this. And I'm going to have to put some of them in the, in the fucking comment section. But, yeah, so uh, that'll do it for Movie Retrospective. Don't uh, go getting yourself anally probed by aliens until we see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye.